and welcome to Sunshine for Your Life. We all have experiences in life where we become afraid. Fear is one of the modern day plagues that we all go through. And what frightens one person may not frighten another. It's very, very individualized according to your past, your experiences that you've had, what has made you afraid in the past and so forth. And a lot of our fears are because of past experiences because when we become afraid due to something that's happened to us, we tend to look at life through those fears. And those those fears become our reality. So fear is an ever-present problem that many people deal with. Well, a while ago, I had oral surgery, and it shouldn't have been a big deal. I was just going to have a tooth removed, but I'm on blood thinners, and whenever you have bleeding involved, a person like me can get into trouble. Well, I didn't, I wasn't afraid of it. You know, that wasn't a problem to me. My dentist knew what was going on, and he knew I was on blood thinners, so it wasn't a problem. And and then my sister said to me, what if a piece of the tooth drops down your throat? Then will you choke? And then what will they do? Now, I had never given any thought to the fact that a piece of tooth would go down my throat and I would start choking. I'd never even thought about that. But she started talking about it, and that made me think of that. And of course, that made me afraid because the sensation of choking is an issue with me. And it turns out that when I had my heart surgery all these many years ago, I wasn't afraid of the surgery. I wasn't afraid of having a stroke. I wasn't afraid of dying. I was afraid of tubes going in in my throat because with the tubes down your throat you swallow whatever you do you're doing it around the tubes and I was afraid of gagging and all of that but as it turned out I really didn't have a problem with it well getting back to the oral surgery it went very very well and I had no problem at all and when I talked to the dentist about my fear of dentistry and all of that he says well let's just talk about that and let me take a look at what's going on in your mouth so he's jabbering away and within with less than a minute he said oh by the way I just took out your tooth it's gone and I was just so terribly pleased it was so easy I had absolutely no trouble and it was just unbelievable how easy it was he started talking the tooth was gone I didn't even know it he says it's all over with you're all finished. And of course, they had to pack your mouth and I bled and all of that. But the thing is, it was a very easy procedure for me to go through. Now, sometimes we become afraid of things that we don't need to become afraid of because God has already taken care of it. I want to read a verse from John 14, 27. This will be the first verse, and this is what it says. I'm going to read part of it, and then I'm going to read the, all, all of it in just a second here. It says, do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Now, the whole thing reads this way. It's a little longer than what's on the screen. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Let me read that whole thing again. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Well, we learn from this verse that there are things that we can do to help us if we are afraid and if we are in a bad situation. And the first thing that we do is that we can decide not to be afraid because the Bible says, do not let your heart be afraid. That means it's a decision on our part and we can say no to fear. Now, I understand that in certain anxiety disorders that people have, because I've counseled a lot of people with anxiety disorders, that they have fears and they just can't necessarily stop it from coming. But this is the first step they can take. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to give it to God. I, I don't have to be afraid because God's got this already. And it's a decision that you make. Now, it may be a while before you actually sense that peace that God will give you. But you can start by making that decision. The anxiety and the nervousness can be very extreme if you have a problem. Because what happens is that when you have something happen to you, 
you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know what the outcome's going to be, and so you feel out of control. We tend to be fearful if we fear that we don't have control over a situation because we don't know what an outcome is going to be. If we think we have control over a situation, then we are less fearful because we think we know what the outcome is going to be. We can imagine the outcome, so therefore we have less fear if we think we're in control, more fear if we think we're out of control. But the problem is there are so many things in life you can't control, and even if you think you have control, you really don't over many things. So we tend to be anxious and nervous when you feel we have no com control, and the fear from this can be very, very profound indeed. But the verse that I just read, John 14, 27, says, do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It's as if you have a choice. And your choice is, I'm going to trust God, and I'm not going to let this fear overtake me. Now, as a counselor, we do know that fear is a terrible thing, and that it, it, it comes upon us sometimes out of the blue. PTSD sometimes comes upon us out of the blue. And we don't have a whole lot of control over it. But if if we make a decision to trust God, and trust is a decision, that can cut the anxiety a lot because we realize God's going to take care of it and we don't have to worry about it. It is, in other words, a matter of trust, and trust is a decision. And when you decide to trust God, then you can finally start to relax. You may not have an answer, but you know that God has the answer, and you know that God is the answer, and that will help you out a whole lot. It is a matter of trusting God that gives you peace, and peace will come, and God will take care of you when you realize that you are under God's control, and the whole situation is under God's control, and you don't have to be afraid. I am amazed at people who pray as if they have to convince God to help them. Oh, God, please help me as I go through the surgery. Oh, God, please help so-and-so as they're going through their surgery. Well, God never said he was leaving, and God never said he wouldn't help. So instead of asking God to do what he's going to do anyway, be with you, stay with you, because the Bible says that he will never leave you nor forsake you, we should instead pray to God and thank him because he's going to do as he says he's going to do. He is going to be with us. I don't have to ask him to be with me. I need to thank him because he's going to be with me because this is part of a promise in the scripture. You know, it's like asking water to be wet. Who would ask water to be wet? It is wet. That's its nature. So I don't have to worry, oh, God, please send me water that's wet. Well, it's going to be wet. That's what it is. God is love. God takes care of us. This is who he is. This is what he does. And so because that's true, if we thank him for it and just relish the fact that it is true, we'll have a lot less anxiety than if we keep asking him to do what he's going to do anyway. So we should, we should thank him for what he is and what he does, and that will help us to have peace. Now I'm going to read a scripture that's not on the screen, uh, but it'll be Philippians 4, 6, and 7, and I'm going to read it twice, but it is a little longer, so I'm not going to put it up on the screen. And this is what it says. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, I am going to read that again, and then I'm going to kind of dissect it for you so you know what it really says. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Now, if you take that scripture and you kind of look at it line by line by line, what is it really telling you? Well, make your decision not to fear. It is an intellectual decision on your part. So it says, do not be anxious. In other words, make your decision not to be anxious. But in everything, pray in detail what your situation is to God with thanks, because you know he's going to intervene and you know he's going to answer. Then the peace of God will be greater than anything that you can imagine. The King James says it passes understanding. It's a powerful peace that is so 
strong that you can't be nervous and you can't be afraid. And anyone who has that kind of peace will, uh, will has undergone that kind of peace will tell you what it's like. It's like it's a powerful peace where you cannot be nervous. I've experienced it, and I think most Christians have. But it, the peace will be greater than anything you can imagine, and it's going to guard your heart, which will be your emotions, and your intellect, which will be your mind. So the Bible says that both your emotions, your heart, and your thinking, which is your mind, will be guarded by Jesus. And so therefore, anything that you have a problem with, pray in detail, this is my problem, God, and, and pray with your own understanding as to what it is, and decide not to be worried about it, and give God permission to help you. I know you're going to help me. I give you permission to help me. That means that you're in assent to God. Now, you're not telling God what to do, and he's going to help you anyway. But the thing is, by being in assent with what God says, it'll help the peace process come along. So I know I'm repeating myself, but I do want to read that verse one more time. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, that's the peace that passes understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Well, you can apply that verse to anything, any situation that you're involved with, whether it's illness or you're involved in a court case or something else is going on in your life or you have to move or you have to sell your house or whatever it is, whatever problem you have, it applies to anything. So it's a good verse to keep on hand. And what I often suggest that people do is take a notebook and write down the verses that mean the most to you, that are the most help to you. The verse and the reference that it comes from, write both of them down. And then when you need to, when you're afraid about something, you've got that notebook filled with all of those verses on peace. And then you can read those, and then they will refresh your mind. And, and God's word has a way of seeping into your soul and healing you anyway. So it's just a way to have it handy when you need it. So you make that all, deci all important decision to trust. And I'm going to read two more verses, and I'm going to close with these two verses. The first one being Hebrews 13, 5. And this is what it says. I'll read it twice. God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Let me read it again. God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And why is this verse important? Because as people, oftentimes, we have a fear of abandonment. You know, we're going to be left alone. The people that we rely on to help us, we're going to be left alone and we're going to have to go it alone. There won't be anyone there to help us. Or God's going to abandon us. We're going to be totally alone. Now, that's a fear in itself. And it's probably a fear that most babies have because if a baby is crying because it can't see its mother, the mother may have just gone into the other room. But the baby's brain isn't developed enough to know that if she's going, that doesn't mean she's gone forever. You know, an older child will realize that if mother is in another room, she's probably coming back, and they're not afraid of being left alone. They're not afraid of being abandoned. But a baby's brain hasn't developed to the point where it can think that way. So you leave, and as far as the baby is concerned, you're gone forever. They may never see you again. And so that fear of abandonment is probably one of the first fears that people have as they're growing up. But it stays with us. If you have a problem and your health has a difficulty and you can't drive to your doctor's appointment, so you're depending upon other people to take you, then you're fearful that they won't be available to take you. And then what happens? You've got no way to go and you feel left out and alone and no one to help you and you feel isolated. And that is a fear in itself. Probably the basic fear that most people have and it may underline a lot of the other fears that people have. So let me read that verse one more time. God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And then the last verse I'm going to read is Ephesians 1, 7. And this is what it says. 
In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Let me read it again. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. What does it mean? Well, we are redeemed. If you're a Christian and you've accepted Jesus into your life, we are redeemed. We don't have to worry about a forever somewhere without God because we will always be with God. And that gives us a sense of peace anyway, to know that we've been redeemed, to know that our sins have been forgiven, to know that God will never leave us or forsake us, to know that we'll never be alone. That will give us a sense of peace. So I really think it's important to understand that verse, although it's not specifically geared for peace, knowing that you are redeemed will also give you peace. So uh, we just need to understand that you're never alone if you're a Christian. If you're not a Christian, it's easy enough to become one. Just ask Jesus into your heart as, as Lord and Savior in prayer. That's all it takes. Let him guide you, let him direct you. He will get, take care of you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So you really don't have to worry about being left alone or being abandoned because God is going to be with you all the way. You know, sometimes God takes care and calms you. Sometimes God calms the storm that you're in, but he always is there to take care of you. So I'm going to close it here. We'll be doing something else next time. Please join me then.